Let's have a quick look through the management of portfolio principles and how they affect what we do and how we think about how we run our portfolio. So first of all, why do we have principles? OK, well, they originated in MSP, actually, in the good practice world. Um, they're universal. And what that means is they apply to all portfolios. So your portfolio, everybody in the world should actually have these principles underpinning the things that are going on. They're self-validating. OK, so they're really proven. We've learned from experience that these are the things that make stuff happen. Uh, reinforced over the years by all the Peter M3 assessments that are showing if these characteristics are missing, then the pro portfolio will probably run into some difficulties. And finally, they're empowering. So for you, the practitioners and the people delivering and managing the portfolio, they give you a reference point to say, this is what we need to be doing, because if we don't do it, these things won't work. And so actually a really key thing about when you're looking at these principles and obviously the book spends a lot of time explaining why you need them. But it's a really easy way of justifying them is to stand back and go, what happens if we don't do them? So let's have a look at the first one, which is an energized culture. So just imagine we didn't have any energy to deliver this portfolio. Just imagine everything was fine and we weren't really going anywhere. You wouldn't have energy and things wouldn't change. And the whole thing about portfolio management is it's about delivering change. So we can get our energy from many sources. The external world may be moving. We can be driven by outside events or new opportunities in the marketplace that you as an organization are really excited about. But we have to have energy to make portfolio management work. The next thing we need is senior management commitment. Well. Just ask yourself, what happens if all those senior managers weren't committed? Yeah, so if you had the boards and all their direct reports going, we don't want to do this, you're not going to get very far. So really, you need to gain, do invest heavily in your stakeholder engagement to explain why you're doing this. And also, very importantly, to understand that the whole concept of portfolio management is a layer of bureaucracy that they may object to. And it may, it may be a bureaucracy or it could be that they're objecting to um, coming under another layer of control. All right. So always be wary of this one. Next up, we've got governance alignment. So there's no point in set a portfolio structure up that doesn't align, align with a corporate decision making structure either. Yep. So this is not a separate beast. It needs to be ingrained and built into the current governance models so where decisions are being made in the around the portfolio there needs to be a toing and froing to those other boards that contribute now this can create a right mess if you're not careful so it normally leads to a restructuring of the governance decision making processes to allow the p3m world to fit into it all right so we need our governance alignment Otherwise, your portfolio is making decisions that the rest of the business don't actually buy into the authority for. Right. So that's that one. And then we need to think about strategic alignment. Yeah. So a portfolio is mixing. It's like a, a, a recipe. Yeah. And so there's a recipe of things that need to be done from a strategic perspective. There'll be a recipe of things that need to be done from the operations day to day perspective. Um, there could be external things coming in that could be from any number of sources. So you've got all these kind of this recipe coming each. So you've got to take all these ingredients and mold them together. And um, so str str strategy alignment is a key element because you've got to take all these dynamics and bring them together into a coherent plan. The whole point of portfolio management is to actually join up these completing forces. So, and let, so the plan has to be aligned to whatever the business strategy is and the business plan, and then the portfolio fits all that into the, what's going on in the PPM world and what's going on into the various operational and functional areas that you're interfacing with. And finally, we've got the portfolio office. Now, uh, the portfolio office is obviously a complex area. And springing to mind there was when we were working with a client trying to get their portfolio office 
up and running and they really struggled to understand you couldn't have a portfolio office without a portfolio. Now, I know that sounds a bit odd, but if you stand back and think about your organisation, does it actually have a portfolio running or is it trying to set up an office of some sort of governance and reporting of a bunch of things? So the portfolio office is a key function of this because it pulls all the data together and all the information together to help make decisions. And it's the hub of knowledge for the organisation and in particular for its uh, whatever its business plan is. So it is as feelers out into strategic planning and a whole range of other areas that are around the organisation. Um, and so then we have to think when we talk about the portfolio office, we need to think about the portfolio structures. And there's the book P3O. Um, and in the course, we've got some um, things from P3O that talk around different types of portfolio models, the most popular being the spoken hub. So you've got the central portfolio office, which interfaces to functional office in each of the main business areas. And that's how it actually gains its influence, where its data comes from. Now, it's not one of the portfolio principles, but I would say we have learned since MOP has come out, you know, six, seven years on, that actually another principle is accurate information. So if you want a, a sixth principle, courtesy of Aspire Europe, I'd say you've got it's got to be accurate information and supporting systems because making portfolio decisions about having the right information at the right time. And we review loads of them as part of our P3M3 assessments. And the one thing they're all missing is information in a timely way. In fact, I would say they're normally overwhelmed with data, but significantly lack information. Anyway, that's uh, not one for the exam. That's one from us. So we hope. You enjoy this section of the course.